Jonathan Randall. Hold your applause, hold your applause. Hey, uh, so good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for joining. We appreciate you taking the time uh, to be here today. I'm really just going to cover a few topics, and actually, in, in three discussions before, curious about kind of what are the topics of the conference as we head into with this customer base. And it seems like um, I can't remember the president who said it, but it, it's the economy, stupid, seems to be the, the topic. I'm going to cover some of that. I'm going to cover maybe a little bit of product stuff, talk about our distribution network, and then I'm going to turn it over to Patrick Brown, who's got some really exciting news on a, on a product that we're introducing uh, today. So just the first thing, uh, and you'll hear about this. We're not advancing. Oh. Clickers got a power button? There we go. Clickers have power buttons. <laughs> That's me. Um, you'll hear later today about Max continued support of the APA Share of the Road and then also the Workforce Heroes uh, programs. Both very important programs uh, for us. I don't want to spend too much time talking about them because I don't want to steal the thunder from later this afternoon on those announcements. Really, I'm going to talk about the economy, at least from a math perspective and what we're seeing and hearing um, out there. So this is not news to anybody as far as what's going, what's going on with GDP, either year to date or quarter to quarter. Um, but what we're forecasting and what we're seeing is that there seems to be better odds for a soft landing whenever that landing may come. So the ebbs and flows, and there's still you know, conflicting data about what we where we should be versus where we are. But really from a GDP perspective, we see that we're positioned well for a soft landing here. And what drives that? And I'm gonna go through really very quickly six stats, really. This, there's housing starts. Um, and of course the interest rates are driving some, some softening there and some low buyer traffic. But the interesting thing is, as I'll get to it, is when you talk about construction, and particularly those segments where Mac has a strong position, we're not really seeing any softening there at all. So even as you see housing starts that may be slowing down, public and, and, and um, uh, uh, road work uh, and um, other commercial construction remains very strong. And so those markets continue to bolster uh, max and, and max order intake. You see that unemployment is still historically low. And then finally, you see that inflation is still above the 2%, although it's come down a little bit. And so whatever actions and activities are happening are getting us to a point where we think, again, we're going to see a little bit of a soft landing. Good spending. And this is where I talk about those conflicting uh, metrics, right? You see unemployment very low, but you see inflation high, yet you see good spending increasing, right? So these dynamics playing off of each other are always very interesting. Again, we're tending to a soft landing. You see industrial production keeping pace. And then there's that contract spending I was talking about that's really driving Mac and our order book. So we opened up our order book August of this year and have seen very robust order intake. Again, our core segments are performing very strong. You see some softening, maybe, or hesitancy in some of the over-the-road large fleet business. Not that there's not need, not, there's the, not, not that there's not demand, but there's some hesitant, hesitancy in maybe placing some of those orders from a replacement standpoint. And we're feeling that a little bit as are our dealers. Finally, the U.S.-Canadian market. So, of course, you see what we did in 2022. 284 heavy duty US Canada, 88 medium duty. When we forecast, we don't forecast US Canada, we forecast uh, USMCA. And right now for this year, USMCA seems to be pacing about 330. So still an incredibly strong market. Anticipation is we'll see a pullback from that to what extent we really haven't publicly stated yet. But the forecast says that any pullback that we see is really gonna be in that long haul business. Ah, vocational share of market continues. And then actually, let me talk to this on this next slide, right? So when you look at the market or you look at the, the heavy duty market, let's talk about the 330,000 trucks that we see, um, that we think are gonna be, be retailed this year. 
What you see in 2022 is long haul accounted for 52% of total registrations. What you see this year is it's counting year to date at about 49.1. That market usually hovers in the 50%. It is the engine that powers the train of the North American commercial truck market. And so when I say that there may be a softening, where you're gonna see the softening is probably in that segmentation for the most part. A couple of years ago, that number was 48. When we had the real trial, that number was about 42% long haul. We're not gonna go down to 42% long haul, but you should see probably a little bit of a pullback. What that means is those other segments are gonna strengthen. You're gonna see the straight trucks strengthen from where it is today. You'll probably see day cabs strengthen from where it is today. Um, and certainly as you saw on the previous slide, the construction segment can and will be a larger percentage of the overall registration um, in the North American market. At least that's what we, that's what we expect to happen. And what we're seeing, by the way, on our order books as well. So looking forward, demand for our products remains very strong. Production for the MD Electric, and we'll talk more about that, begins this quarter. Uh, we're continued and making continued investments in sustainability, which you saw with the introduction of the MD Electric, which you see here in this truck over here, which is a CNG truck for, uh, for UPS. What you see from our LRE and the electric garbage trucks that we're out selling in the market today and what we're getting ready for with our dealer network. So very quickly about the products and the products we're highlighting here today, obviously the Mac Anthem, which is to my right. Again, that's the CNG version of it. Um, the Anthem was introduced in 2017, really started selling it in 2018, and it's been very well received um, by the fleet. And it was really max entrance back into what you could say was the commercial long haul truck market. The first new truck we had in quite some time. And so overall, the truck performs very well. Uh, we have very, uh, very robust offering from the standpoint of heavy haul through to fuel efficient models. Uh, and the fleets have adopted it. We see, uh, we've seen our fleet business pick up as a result of it. And we're excited about what the truck brings to us as far as opportunities in the market. What has been uh, a great success story and even a little bit maybe of a surprise, even to ourselves, is what we've done with the Mac Medium Duty, which we introduced, now I'm losing. We introduced it, okay, actually I said this before. It wasn't the cause of what happened in 2020, but we introduced this at the NTA truck show in March of 2020, and then the world shut down. Um, but since then, we've gone into serial production with this, and it's really been very, very successful for us. Uh, as a matter of fact, last year we finished the year at five and a half percent market share. Year to date, we're five percent right now. We figure we're still going to finish at five and a half, if not higher than that, from a standing stop. So we've hit our market share targets in half the time we anticipated we were going to uh, with the Mac Medium Duty. And what we've got outside for ride and drive for any of those interested, we've got the Mac Medium Duty Electric out front for a ride and drive. Take it for a spin. It's pretty impressive. Um, you can get two versions of this in class six or seven uh, and at a 140 range or a two or 150 range and a 240 range. Um, we believe that the payback on this truck will eventually be equivalent to the diesel version. Um, and uh, it can, in today's configuration, be a one for one replacement for a diesel counterpart, which is one of, I think, the barriers to the adoption of electrification is not only the cost, but the ability for the current technology to run the routes that today's diesel run. And the MDE does that for us already. Of course, we do this with our dealer network and our partners supporting us. Um, and of course, we've got nationwide coverage. Really, that's, Patrick's gonna talk some more about the coverage that we're offering, but just some, some notes. Uh, uh. Just about the investments, not only that Mack Trucks makes, but our dealers make. And there's a couple of numbers here I just want to focus on, really. Number one in that top left, $1 billion in investment over the last 10 years by our dealers. Mack has made significant investments as well, and, and we've publicly announced a $2 billion investment for the group in product enhancements over the coming years, um, at north of a billion of that being Mack specific. So. We're extremely excited about the investments not only the group is making in North America, but that the dealers are making in their, their facilities 
showing the faith that they have in our brand. 